Good morning, everyone. We are sitting here in the 8235R today. It is a balmy 45 degrees Fahrenheit outside. We are about to head out and start combining beans. It is 1032 in the morning, and we are going to head out. Uh, we're going to head it up and do one of Travis's farms first. We're going to harvest soybeans up there. And then, kind of depending on where the day takes us, eventually we're going to work our way around. We have a group of farms that are out west. Out west. And, um... They uh, are kind of all grouped together, so we're going to head out there and start doing those for soybeans because we really want to get the soybeans out. Now, corn, you can harvest after the snow falls if you really had to. Soybeans, however, aren't quite so easy. So um, we're going to go fuel up the 82. We got just over half a tank fuel. Um, since we're going to be away for a while, or at least the 82 will, uh, it's best to start off with a full tank of fuel. So... Let's start up. So one of the ways that we keep the fuel separate is by having these two different diesel fuel tanks. The one on the left is dad's and the one on the right is technically still dad's, but um, Travis and I use the tank on the right. Now, both of these tanks have the cellular connections on them. Uh, I'm not totally sure if they're active, but essentially what the tanks will do is they'll send the co-op a notification when they get too low, uh, and they'll know when they need to come out and refuel the tanks. So that way we don't have to keep as close of an eye on them as uh, you would otherwise. So there's two air filters on the 82 that we're gonna clean before we head out since we're gonna be away for a while. And the first one is going to be the engine air filter, which is right about here at the tip of my finger. And then the other one is the cab air filter, which is right along the roof of the cab, just above the entry door, which is right there. So we're gonna pop the hood on the 82, take those two filters up, blow them out, put them back in, and then we should be pretty well set to go. Radiator's good. Neither of them weren't too bad. Since I've got the time, I'm gonna pull the 82 up into the shed and clean the windows off. If you look closely, you'll see a little smudge on the window right there. Last week when we were harvesting, Rocket was riding with me and he was looking out the front windshield, looking at something, whether it was a rabbit or a bird or something, and I had to slam on the brakes and he slammed his nose into the windshield. Poor dog.
First load of the day. Right on time. Just as everything was starting to get full. So unfortunately, the combine just ate a rock. So we gotta fix the head. That means we gotta take the head home and work on it. So we're gonna take these back to the buildings. We aren't gonna get another semi load tonight. So the green cart is full. I've got a very partial load on this. So we're just gonna take things back and we'll be back up tomorrow by the time we get the head fixed and everything i'm not totally sure dad said that the combine was still running so the uh it didn't the rock didn't go that far in Was that the skid? That was the combine head when I backed up. Put down the hill, then ejected out into the beam. It doesn't look like you picked up any rocks. Because if it was that big, to destroy seven of them things. The last time we ran a rock in it, it took them all out. Hmm. Could the problem have a, is, according to the combine, though. It could have obliterated the rock. It's possible we could have obliterated it, the rock, but... Rocket! Rocket! Rocket, come on! Come on! Let's go! Let's go back to the truck, guys. That's all it is. Come on, Kevin. So, we got the bean head fixed. What we think happened was that there was a mount of dirt in the center of the head and since it's a flex head what the head will do is it'll flex across the bottom what we think happened was that it flexed up in the center and the fingers and the auger that pull the crop in hit the bottom plate on the bean head and that broke them off because we looked around we couldn't find any rocks or anything um, it doesn't really even look like anything happened really I, it just kind of broke and for the way it sounded, I wouldn't doubt that they were hitting the bean head. So dad is on his way here now. Uh, we continued to harvest that field of Travis's. We want to get done with that tonight. So then we can move on to my field next. And um, that field is 30 acres. I think from there, we're going to go to my other field, which is 26.5 acres. And then um, I'm not totally sure where we're going to go from there, but that should be pretty well all of my beans. And um, dad's on his way right now. Uh, we went up and we had all of the carts filled. Unfortunately, we couldn't get another truck. So we wanted to get that field done. So dad brought, dad dumped the Easy Trail grain cart into the Easy Trail wagon. And he's on his way here right now with the 7600. So we're going to hop in the 4020. We're going to lift the auger up on it, the 
the jump auger and then we're gonna move it over to the 2000 bushel bin so that way Travis can store his beans in there temporarily until he can get them sold because I'm not totally sure when we're gonna get another truck hopefully tomorrow but um, we're just playing it by ear we just want to get this done so let's gonna go let's go over here and take the auger down in the 4020 and then dad should be pulling in momentarily I would hope Two inches, good. Nothing. Okay, we'll work that solenoid in the morning. How much is the solenoid? $88. Normally, when you, you shut it off, you can feel it kick out or whatever, you know? Yep. No, it's driving all the time. Want to recount your experience to the world of YouTube? What happened? <laughs> Come on, everybody else is saying I filled my drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Front end was not disengaging on the highway. With a full load of soybeans. 500 bushel of soybeans behind me. Hey, can somebody get me... Started down a... Started down a, a hill on blacktop. The front end decided it was going to bounce off the road by about four feet. <laughs> like 25 times. <laughs> I saw my whole life flash before my eyes and there wasn't nearly enough of it. <laughs> So Travis took the solenoid off the 7600 and we're pretty sure that's what's wrong because it didn't pass the magnetization test. So Travis held a piece of metal up to the solenoid and how a solenoid works is that when you engage it, uh, it becomes magnetized and it disengages the four wheel drive or the uh, front wheel drive on the 7600. So um, now we 
just have to go get a new solenoid and hopefully that'll fix it. Now, I have something, something that's kind of in the works right now and I kind of want you guys to guess what it is. Um, I want you guys to guess what our next big purchase is gonna be. Now, I'm not saying that anything's for sure yet, but uh, I might or might not be working on something and I just kind of want to see what your guys' opinions are. So down in the comments, say what you think it might be. And um, if you see a comment that you think is what you think it is, upvote it. And uh, let's see what the most popular opinion for what you guys think it is. And um, I don't know, it's just something I'm working on. There's nothing for sure yet. We'll just have to wait and see. But um, I'm remaining hopeful and hopefully it'll kind of improve things around the farm a little bit. So with that, I'll let you all go. Uh, we're gonna be working on one of my bean fields tomorrow and um, that'll probably be our next video. So keep an eye out. With that, I'll let you all go. Thank you for watching our videos, guys, and I'll see you next time.